This is Twit. The review units, uh, how long did you get it the day of, Renee? Um, I forget because FedEx was delayed for me. They oh, had okay. It's like it's on Twitter where you see all the reviewers just complaining about FedEx and you're pretty certain something's arriving that day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you got it, but you've had it for almost a week then. Yeah, I've had it since I think Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday. Okay. Plenty of time to say benchmark it. Oh, I benchmarked this. I did the stonks version of benchmarking, Leo, because I knew that's only the only thing anyone would be asking. So I did the geek benches, the center benches, the GFX, ben anything that with the word bench in it. I think I did a park bench. By There's accident. a lot of these benchmarks. There is a geek bench native uh, M1 benchmark, but a lot of these benchmarks are not. They're Intel benchmarks, so you'd be really benchmarking Rosetta 2 as much as anything else. I will hold off. Let me hold off on your thoughts while we just summarize... Yes, what we're seeing from uh, Matthew Panzerino on TechCrunch, from Ars Technica, from uh, Nilay Patel at The Verge. Actually, The Verge had all three and had three different reviewers test all of them. Consensus uh, from everybody is, whoa, <laughs> these, things, <laughs> these things are fast. Uh, and, of course, Matthew, who did a lot of battery testing, Amazing battery. Whoops, I pushed the yeah. wrong button there. Amazing battery life as well. Um, Apple's new, this is Matthew Panzerino, Apple's new M1-powered MacBook shows impressive performance gains that make Intel's chips obsolete overnight. I Is that hyperbole in your opinion, Renee? So I managed to get all three of them as well, and I've been testing them all weekend. And there is one area that Intel still dominates. And I said this in my video. If you need your coffee cup kept warm by your Mac Mini, <laughs> if you need to use your MacBook Pro as a heat blanket in the winter, then you are still going to have to go with Intel because I pushed these things like 30-minute loops, everything I could do, and they barely get hot. Like it took me 10 minutes to get the MacBook Airs fan to come on. Uh, and oh, sorry, to get the MacBook Air to down ramp and to get the MacBook Pros fan to even come on. And even then it was whisper quiet while the Intel Air and the Intel uh, MacBook Pro were gasping for air like they'd been sucked out into space. This, it's uh, a rem and this animated GIF from Matthew Panzerino kind of tells the story. He is launching in succession each application in his dock. There is zero bouncing. They all launched. It is, it's just once I was an iPad. It's like it's feel it feels like having an iPad. Are these real launches, though? I mean, are they ready to run, or is this uh, one of those tricks that where they they stop bouncing and they've got they render a screen, but it's not really usable yet? No, it depends on the app. Like Photoshop and Final Cut Pro will still take a few bounces, but it's not like eight bounces. Like I, I made this joke, and I thought it was a joke at first. I said like a like a a movie trailer. Like imagine a world with no more bouncing. Imagine a world where you're not waiting. Imagine a world without beach balls. It would be beautiful yeah but that's really close to what i did not get a single beach ball i did not get a stammer a stutter in final cut pro did not drop a frame and these are the low power low end worst of any m machine that's ever going to come out well and we should say this because on sunday now you had this on sunday but you couldn't tell anybody so yes. you were talking with some knowledge of a forethought but uh, uh the rest of us including uh, alex Lindsay, were not and and you and alex kind of agreed that these are not really pro even the macbook pro is not pro i mean i think nobody would deny that there will be the next generation and the generation after that and they will get faster and faster and faster but yes i would have to say given what i've seen in the benchmarks even given the performance with admittedly only 16 gigs of ram uh that this macbook pro for instance outperformed the mac pro in some cases Almost, yeah, so the, the big constraint is going to be ports, I think, for people who are are legitimate pro users, because you just can't, without a hub, Get a freaking a dock, then. Yeah, no, that, that's totally true. But the thing with the RAM is, like, the machines these replaced only had 16 gigabytes. But And you're, and Apple was really good. They did memory compression. They did ultra-fast swap. But now you have a unified memory pool, which operates completely differently than a traditional VRAM and DRAM system. You're not copying things back and forth. Everything is instantly available. It's a pool. And we're going to have to reconceptualize how we talk about RAM on a like, it's like talking about it on an iPad now. It's not like talking about it on a traditional that, PC. That was my bet, uh, and I still haven't used it. My my MacBook Pro 13 comes on uh, Friday. But 
that was my bet was that you shouldn't compare 16 gigs of ram on this device to a, a an intel yeah. device especially because of the unified memory architecture panzerino even goes so far as to say i think apple might phase out the notion of ram entirely uh and you might have some sort of shared storage slash ram some sort of optane wouldn't be optane it's like an ibm Intel. dream for years right like they've yeah. been kind of patented to sell mm, that yeah. for years but it could be possible so you might have you know two ter up to two terabytes of ram let's say except that it's ram plus storage and because it's on chip it's all equally fast i mean I just want to say, I just want to say my guess was at this even before the announcement last week but even but at the announcement for sure that this was an inflection point in desktop computing yeah. that's that th yeah. that everything was going to be kind of before Apple silicon and after Apple silicon and I don't see anything at all to doubt that assessment this is now Andy you pointed out that a number of the Intel fanboys on YouTube <laughs> and elsewhere <laughs> Lewis Rossman and people like that are saying, uh, to, what is their complaint? Uh, well, other complaint is that they're they're. Uh, they, they, I think they took umbrage at the hey, this is faster than ninety eight percent of all Windows uh, laptops uh, released in the past year, and yeah, that's marketing lingo. But they didn't really focus on the actual performance of this actual thing. They're also complaining about uh, RAM expandability, but they're also complaining about uh, the, the the GPU performance is not going to be as good as a dedicated GPU. Well, wait uh, a, a minute, because hold your. Yeah, <laughs> they obviously exactly. hadn't benchmarked it yet. Yeah, I mean, a, a lot, but, but really, to sum up, a lot of this is really sounds familiar to the first Mac that was released and the first iPad that was released, where they're trying to compare it to uh, uh, a stand. They're trying to compare it to the architecture and the sort of devices that they're used to when it's really, really uh, becoming clear that Apple didn't just swap from one processor to another. They reinvented the Mac from the ground up. And so there is going to be, as, as people continue to use these things, they're certainly going to be able to find, I'm sure, or rather, I, I have to believe, <laughs> despite all immediate evidence, that they're going to find areas in which this uh, this uh, new uh, M1 CPU is not the not the, the one ring to rule them all. But the thing is, as you say, it, it feels more like an iPad because it was designed more like an iPad, yeah, not but just I, a CPU swap. I don't like the feels more like an iPad because that implies that somehow it's less than than desktop computing. This is I mean instantaneous yeah, though. Like the the iPad is so responsive. Like to me, that's the thing. When, whenever somebody says, I wish I had like Final Cut Pro on the iPad, I try to figure out what do they actually mean? And there's a responsiveness and immediacy and instantaneity, instantaneous -nality to the iPad. Like you press something, it happens. You're never waiting. It's like, it never feels like it's beach balling. It just, it feels like it's doing exactly what you want the second your fingers touch it. And for the first time, that's what these Macs feel like. And it's not just that, like, yes, the performance is outlandish. The battery life, I ran all my benchmarks on battery. And the the MacBook Air, MacBook Pro were down to like 68 and 70%. And the Intel ones were like 27% and 40%. But beyond even that, it just felt like I was getting slices of my life back. Like just using Final <laughs> Cut without every time I go over a plug-in, it spins. Without every time I go over something, it stops to render. Without it having to load and not, like... It was like getting seconds and minutes of my life back, and I was just smiling the whole time. <laughs> Lori, can you can you hold your breath and wait? So, the, so I I'm thinking about things like so. Um, World of Warcraft just recently announced that they are Native, already set up out for, of the box. Yeah, yeah. and it, it 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 was it made me think of things like I. Everybody knows that Macs aren't meant for gaming, but now I'm starting to think. <laughs> maybe Max can be meant for gaming right now, and and maybe this is opening up a whole new world in terms of of you know what is possible on a Mac and whether or not people would be interested in playing games on a Mac. It, and a lot of it has been limitations in what you know the Mac could do in terms of you know a dedicated GPU and things like that. So I I, I don't know. It seems. It's crazy. <laughs> single threaded it's really... per, single threaded performance better than almost anything including yeah, maybe Ryzen 3. Even, maybe Ryzen 3. <laughs> yeah. I mean just uh, even I mean even for mobile this is uh, a, a killer but even for for not mobile for desktop yeah. this is a killer. The webkit render speeds were ridiculous. 
Multi-threading yeah. is is also very strong. Multi-core is very strong. Mm -hmm. And I think the GPUs are stronger than people thought, too. Is that been your experience, Renee? Yeah, I mean, so... The, the, Certainly the better than any what, other integrated graphics. I mean, if you're... Yes, it, that's what I was going to say. Like, compared Iris, to Intel... Kinda, yeah. Yeah, it's like it runs laps around it, then goes and does calisthenics in the middle of yeah. the field while it's waiting for the Intel <laughs> ones to finish. Um, like, again, like some people are like, well, you didn't compare it to RDNA 2. You didn't compare it to Ampere. Yeah. And it makes me want to do a wellness check for R slash Android. Sorry, R slash hardware <laughs> at that point, because those are like thousand dollar cards with literally the shield helicarrier as their ventilation. You know, and those are 300 watts of power draw. This is this is literally a low power system and it's doing performance that no longer makes you regret. It's like like the MacBook Air just feels like you're not making any compromises anymore and with yeah. zero fan. And that's pretty amazing. Yeah, let, let's not let's not overlook the fact that oftentimes when they're benchmarking these systems against AMD and Intel d devices, they're talking about fifteen hundred dollar, two thousand dollar builds. These are these are the machines that have historically been the low end of Macs, with the with the exception of the MacBook Pro. the The entry level Mac has been the Mac Mini. The entry level MacBook has been the MacBook Air, and uh, Apple is delivering revolutionary leaps in speed at this low end. So it's a great boon for people who are uh, in the budget to moderate price, to price range, but it also kind of gets you all tingly inside thinking about what happens when they really, really, really want to say, well, what if we put nice. four fans in it and put a thousand watt uh, power supply in it and make it a tower? How fast can we make it then? It's an exciting time to be a Mac fan. And people who say, oh, it's a first generation uh it's important to point out that Apple has been using, has been building their own chips since 2007 with the iPhone. Uh, they acquired PA Semiconductor shortly after that, which was a chip manufacturing design company. They have more than a thousand engineers, and they've been doing this for more than 10 years. So mm -hmm. this isn't really the first Apple chip. This is just the first Apple chip in a Mac. Yeah. Um, it, it is. It does have a little bit of weight to it because I do get the impression that they designed a chip that was kind of ideal for the MacBook Air, and then they also put it in the MacBook, in the Mac Mini, and the MacBook Pro. The only thing that I'm disappointed with, as we were, as you were saying earlier, is that the it, I believe it's it would you would think that maybe the I/O of this chip is kind of limited because look at the back just look at the back of the Mac mini there is so much space to put more stuff yeah and the fact that they can put uh, uh, admittedly two channels of super super fast uh, Thunderbolt uh, uh, of there that's really good but nonetheless you would like to not have to buy a 250 dollar uh, dock in order to just plug in my webcam and my keyboard and my mouse well I'm sure uh, they'll solve this in later versions oh, absolutely, absolutely this yeah, is that, a, this is incorrect. on the SOC there's only two Thunderbolt four slash usb4 right really fast ones though they're fast absolutely <laughs> yeah but there's only two of them and there's only uh, enough space for 16 gigs of ram so that's but presumably that will be solved in, in later generations yeah. yeah that's first generation for heaven's sake what a great what a great explosion out the gate but i almost don't want to say oh but it's you know i don't want to say it's uh, ipad like or oh it's just first generation because i think i mean yes if in the back of your head you say wow, they've done this in the first generation. What's the next generation going to look like? Mm -hmm. That's fine. But I think that that diminishes it somehow, their accomplishment here. Well, this so is the remarkable. accomplishment here, though, is like it's not just the silicon. Because like you said, like this is basically an A14, the, the X variant with plus plus because it has Mac dedicated IP. But when you look at how clever they were, like, yes, there was all sorts of stuff that you can dunk on about how things like Catalyst were implemented over the last few years and them getting rid of, like they systematically took on a bunch of short-term pain, 32-bit apps, uh, you know, they, they deprecated a ton of stuff, but they got to a point where if you don't have any native apps, if you only have the Intel apps, you hit a button and it downloads and translate it, doesn't emulate it, it translates it at download, everything that is compiled, anything that's not just in time, just in time it'll do in real time. And then anytime that's updated, it'll redo the translation at launch. And then they feel like native apps, like they don't get the acceleration that a truly native app does. They're not faster than you'd expect, but they run as expected. And when you look at Windows on ARM or you even think back to PowerPC Rosetta, it is a, it is a, a sea change in how good they've gotten at making one like something compiled for x86 run on something compiled for apple silicon that like you barely notice even on cranky apps like 
like the Adobe Suite, you really barely notice. Yeah. I have to use because my Kodak, my uh, Kodak for my Canon camera that I shoot with is Rosetta. It's running it, it, the Kodak is running is in Rosetta inside Final Cut, and it's as fast on this stupid MacBook Air, and I use that term lovingly <laughs> as it is on my Mac, my 16 inch MacBook Pro. I just don't like that the screen is smaller. That's my pain point now. Is yeah, this is great, but my screen is too small. There, uh, so a number of people in the chat room are saying, well, how is it possible that Apple's doing something nobody else has done? And uh, there's two things. I mean, the first one is this has taken a long time. This is a decades or more work. But also uh, these other companies are hampered by, it's the innovator's dilemma. They're hampered by their existing platforms and an unwillingness to burn the ships behind them. Uh, in this case, Apple's burning its ships. They're saying all full speed ahead. And the commitment I mean, to doing that, I mean, yes, they're still selling Intel Macs, but you would be at I this point I still can't combine my nuts. Apple IDs, easily. Everyone has legacy debt. There's some problems, <laughs> I know. But legacy <laughs> debt is not to be, uh, and that's it. What it. Intel's next chip is going to be 14 nanometers. Yes, with more cores <laughs> and running at a higher voltage. Could you imagine when they went to Apple and said, hey, listen, that iMac you're building, you want to make it look like an iPad. <laughs> well, we're going to use a bigger chip with more cores and run it at a higher voltage just so we can say it's got 10% performance improvement. Is that okay with you?